So welcome to the last presentation in Unit 5. Uh, this is called Nuclear, and so we're talking about nuclear chemistry. quote we have here is from Stephen Hawking. Um, it says, I would like nuclear fusion to become a particular or a practical power source. It would provide an exhaustible supply of energy without pollution or global warming. And so we're going to talk about nuclear energy. We're going to talk about some nuclear chemistry. Um, jumping into this, our learning goals. Students will classify a reaction as a chemical or nuclear reaction. Distinguish between fission and fusion reactions. So what Mr. Hawking was just saying there. And describe applications of nuclear material in everyday life. So what we should already know coming into this. Uh, the nucleus is the center of the atom. The nucleus contains the protons and neutrons. And the nucleus has a positive and um, has the positive charge and the majority of the mass in the atom. So we know the nucleus is at the very center, it's very small, it's very dense, it has all the mass. Um, what we learned in the lab, uh, that the nucleus of the atom can change. So we can change the number of protons, we can change the number of neutrons, um, and that changes the, uh, the identity of that atom um, to the identifying of the atom changes in a nuclear reaction, the identity of it. Um, and so control rods, the other thing we learned was control rods are used to regulate nuclear reactions. And so when we're looking at this, the big thing that we need to get from this, uh, chemical reactions, that protons and neutrons remain constant as the atom connects to each other in different ways using the electrons. So when we're looking at this, a chemical reaction, and this is the big thing you need to get from this, protons and neutrons stay the same. The only thing that's reacting when we're looking at a chemical reaction are the electrons. The electrons are being uh, shared. They're either being transferred, um, either one of those things. That's a chemical reaction. Now let's talk about a nuclear reaction. A nuclei or a nuclear reaction, uh, the nuclei uh, change by splitting apart or combining protons and neutrons. So the main difference between a chemical reaction and a nuclear reaction is that a nuclear reaction involves the nuclei. It involves the protons and neutrons in the nucleus, and it involves breaking those apart. Chemical reaction, we're just dealing with electrons. In a nuclear reaction, we are dealing with the nucleus. Now, a fission reaction um, is a type of nuclear reaction, um, large nuclei that splits into two smaller nuclei. Um, it's lower in energy than a fusion reaction, um, but still it's a great deal of energy compared to a chemical reaction. Uh, nuclear power plants and early atomic bombs, they were fission reactions. Now, a fusion reaction, on the other hand, uh, takes two smaller nuclei that stick together to make one larger nuclei. Um, it's uncontrollable, requires high heat, and is found only in bombs, uh, hydrogen bombs, and the sun. The biggest difference between a fusion and a fission reaction is that a fission reaction is big going smaller. A fusion reaction is essentially something relatively small going just a little bit bigger. Um, fusion reactions are much, much greater in energy um, in the release of energy than fusion. Now, a type of nuclear reaction, specifically we call these decay reactions, and we're going to talk about a couple of them. The first one is called alpha decay. It occurs when an alpha particle, we call that a helium nucleus, um, is ejected from a large unstable nucleus. So this is a very unstable nucleus. Um, and what it does is it ejects a small particle to become more stable. So it ejected that helium nucleus in that alpha particle. So we would specifically call this the alpha particle. It ejected that in that nuclear decay, and we call that alpha decay. Now, another type of nuclear decay is called beta decay. Uh, it occurs when a neutron is converted into a proton, an electron, um, or an antineutrino. Now, a beta particle can be stopped by the skin. Um, and so what we see here is we see a very large nuclei, and it breaks up into its pieces. And we would call this particle right here, um, we, we would call that the beta particle. And we see that it's ejected. Um, the next particle or next decay we're going to talk about is gamma decay. Now it occurs when a nucleus is in a high energy state. This is an unstable, so 
excess energy is released as a gamma particle or a photon requiring a thick lead shield to stop it. Now the main thing with this, which we need to pay attention on a, on a gamma to decay, on the other two, the alpha and the beta, we saw that there was a change in mass. Here we don't see that change in mass. And basically we're going from this excited state to this gamma radiation, putting off essentially just a photon. So let's look at a fundamental question. It says match the type of reaction with the equation below. So we're looking at a chemical reaction and a nuclear reaction. Now a nuclear reaction involves the nucleus. So that would match up there. A chemical reaction, we're not changing the products at all. We're not changing the atoms at all, not changing their identity. And so that would be a chemical reaction. We see that we have uranium and then we see we have a neutron here and that changes into different elements. So essentially you don't have the same elements on each side on a nuclear. On a chemical you do. Now uh, another question, uh, A2, it says match the type of reaction with the equation below. A fission reaction and a fusion reaction. Now a fission reaction is big to small. And so what we see here, very large nuclei getting smaller. So that's a fission reaction. A fusion reaction is small combining to make one thing to get just a little bit bigger and produces a lot more energy. So there it would be fusion. Next one, it says match each of the following with the equation. So alpha decay, when we're looking for alpha decay, we're looking for that change so that we have a helium nucleus basically emitted. And so when we look at this one right here, we don't see the helium nucleus. Um, but what we do see is we do see a change in the mass. That was 218 right there. It's 222 right there. A mass of four and two protons. And that would be helium right there. Now, beta decay. Beta decay, we're going to see that it emits a antineutrino here. And we see that there's a slight change in mass of one neutron right there. And then gamma decay, what we see is there's no change in mass at all. If the mass stays the same, it's just energy. And our last one it says write an equation for the alpha decay of carbon-14. So we have carbon, which what we see here is a C. And then we have carbon has 14 and its mass number, and then it has carbon has six protons. And so it's going to go through alpha decay. It's going to break up. We're going to have a helium, which is 4,2-H-E. And we need to balance this out. So since this is a mass of four, we took four up right there. That means we only have 10 left. And a mass of at the bottom of the number of protons, we have six there and two there. So that means we have four left. And so hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, so it would be B, E, because it has four protons.